Here, as everyone knows, is a periodic table of elements. Everything in this universe is created from them, but how are they created? Let's go find out. The formation of atoms as we know them today was called nucleogenesis. It can be broken down into three separate parts, which we will talk to you about in a short five minutes. The first part started 15 million years ago, when our universe was just a small, hot, condensed dot only a few millimeters across. This dot then exploded in an event called the Big Bang, which I'm sure you've all heard of. You're probably wondering why that matters, though. How did that make elements? Well, after the Big Bang happened, temperatures began to decrease as our universe expanded to what we know it as today. Because the temperatures fell, particles created in the Big Bang started moving more slowly, making them more able and more likely to stick together. Positively charged particles called protons and neutral particles called neutrons stuck together through a strong force. Then electric and magnetic forces came and brought the electrons into the picture to form the first hydrogen atoms. And just two hours after the Big Bang, our universe was comprised of 89% hydrogen and about 11% helium. Keep going? Right. So the next step in nuclear synthesis is called stellar nucleosynthesis which simply means it happens in stars. So, once we had the hydrogen and helium in the universe, they slowly start to form a cloud due to gravity. So this is, represents the cloud. And then in the cloud, so there's little particles. Gravity, which we know today, slowly pulls these together to form a denser and denser mass. Eventually, these particles start to collide with each other, starting a process called nuclear fusion. This is the energy that produces, or this is the process that produces the most of the sun's and star's energy today. Oh, and this is, <laughs> this is how the first of the 26 lightest elements are formed. So in stellar nucleosynthesis, there are two main processes in which the energy keeps cycling. This is the first one. It is called proton-proton chain reaction. So these, there are two. The other one is called CNO, or carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle. And these uh, are also in the main reaction that's called hydrogen burning, which simply is just the hydrogen being formed in the new, of the first of the 26 uh, elements. So let's take a closer look at the proton-proton chain. So in the proton-proton chain, four of the uh, um, hydrogen atoms collide and form an uh, atom called deuterium. And these go down and form the first of the helium uh, atoms, and which goes and collides, and then finally forms our stable four helium atom. All right, so the other process in the, in the sun and the other stars is called CNO cycle or the carbon and nitrogen and oxygen cycle. Here's just a quick look at it and it shows how some of the medium uh, elements are formed including uh, so carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. They just revolve around the CERC cycle. After this process of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen cycle is done, which is part of the hydrogen burning, as Eric said earlier, the star will then transform into a stage called helium burning, which is part of the red giant stage of the star. Now, no other elements are really created in the helium stage that are created in the other hydrogen part of the star, so that's really not exciting in the nucleogenesis world. But the star can transition to a different path called a supernova. A supernova is a star explosion. In supernova, two types of nucleogenesis can be formed. Explosive nucleogenesis and the R process, along with some other minor processes. Explosive nucleogenesis uses cycles kind of like the carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle to form the heavier elements. These elements are formed in the same type of cycles but need higher temperatures. The higher temperatures come from the explosion, which creates more energy, and the cycle takes place. After some of the heavier elements have been created, a process like the, called the R process can take place. The R process involves an element, 
like mulberry in here, and a neutron. When the elements are heavy enough, they kind of start in this stellar explosion, they uh, collect a neutron, and their mass number increases by one, but their atomic number stays the same, keeping the same element. This can go on for an extremely long period of time, and just create heavier and heavier isotopes. And after a while, these isotopes will become unstable, and will need to form more stable. To do this, they release a particle called a beta particle. Beta particle is a form of radiation, but it's just an electron that's a high-speed electron really leaving the particle. Now when this happens, the uh, new element is, a new element is formed that has the same mass number as the old element, but an atomic number of one higher. Now this element can then also go on and get more neutrons and repeat the same process, slowly increasing the atomic number to get the larger and larger elements. This is the R process. Now there is other processes that can be called, formed in, for the heavier elements, and one is the RP process. This process is rare, and is actually not in a supernova, but takes place in black holes and neutron stars, both of which are very common. So now we know how all the elements were made. So we really are all stars.